everybody. Uh, this is a topic I've actually wanted to have a chat about for some time. Uh, the world of sealers is very confusing for most people. There are a lot of things out there that come under that general banning banner of sealer. Um, and the word sealer doesn't actually on its own mean very much. So I just want to go over the sort of categories of sealer that exist so you can understand just a little bit about the basics of the sealer world. Um, now some of what people re refer to as sealers or sealants are uh, not what we would talk about as a sealer, so they're things like uh, crack fillers or joint fillers, you know, which you would put in a gap to fill it up. So we're not talking about that at the moment. What we're talking about are things that are used to seal a porous surface and protect it against certain types of damage. Now, um, if, when you break it down, it's not as complicated as, as it sounds, though there's all these thousands of products out there with different brands and different marketing on the outside. It comes down to this two basic categories of sealer. So one is your traditional type of sealer that's been available for gee actually hundreds of years um, and that that is the world of coatings. So this is a piece of stone and it's got a coating on the outside just for the sake of the exercise we've put it on nice and thick so you can see it's got this layer. It's like putting varnish on wood, it's the same sort of thing, similar sort of technology actually. Here's a, the same sort of stone without it. And this has got this coating on the outside. Now, <coughs> coatings have some pros and some cons. So, um, you know, 50 years ago, this would be the main thing that you would use to seal something with. These days, coatings are not very popular for a number of reasons. So, what are coatings good for? Well, as you can see, it's a whole layer. It's like putting a sheet of plastic over your surface. So it's very impervious to liquids, you know, if you put some water or oil or whatever it is on top of the coating. I mean, it's like having a piece of plastic there, so it's just going to sit there and it's not going to go in. Um, <clears throat> that's, however, if something lands on the top of it. What happens if this is on the ground and you have, for instance, water coming up from underneath? Well, that's a real problem because <clears throat> the coating's only on the top and the water will soak up from underneath and get right up to the top surface and it'll be all wet under there. This is also like plastic, so there's no, there are no holes, there are no p open pores now for that water to escape, so it'll just actually stay in there. And over time you can find things like mold building up underneath your coating. Uh, things like efflorescence and minerals that come up dissolved in the water can be deposited between the coating and the stone. Um, but probably the biggest problem with coatings and the reason why they're not used too much these days is because they wear. So you can see this one here is starting to, well we've made it, we've done it on purpose, but this is what will happen with coatings over time. It's gone a little yellow. Uh, coatings can go yellow, it depends what type of coating is, but it'll go yellow or it'll go white. Um, and they do become brittle, especially under UV light outside, so under sunlight. And they start to deteriorate, uh, even indoors where you don't have that UV light acting on it where you walk most, so in the middle of your floor, say your pathway from your front door through into your house or in the middle of your kitchen where you walk, if you have a coating on it, you will wear through that part of it. And then the big problem is <coughs> you can't just touch up that area because you can see it, it looks absolutely horrible. So you've got to strip this coating off. Now coatings are very cheap and they're quite easy to apply, but they're a bit of a nightmare to strip off. You need to use pretty nasty solvents, pretty nasty chemicals to get them off. Um, and it's a hell of a process. You sort of have to put the chemical on, let it sit there for a while, soften up a bit of the coating, sop up all the goo, and then keep going until you get it all off. And even a relatively small area can take days to do. So that's a bit of a nightmare. And that's probably the biggest issue there is with coatings. I mean, other than the fact that it blocks up the pores and it can cause all sorts of other problems, the biggest thing is having to redo it. Also, of course, this changes the look of the surface radically. Now, if you buy a beautiful marble floor like that, you don't necessarily want it to look like that. Um, it will change the look of the, 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 uh, the floor, or the, so whatever surface it is, but also when it gets wet, it's going to change the slip resistance of the surface. So, you know, when it's wet it can be very slippery. Um, of course you can get really matte coatings that stop that, but then they've got little bits of micro particles of, of glass and so on in them to to get that slip resistance, and then they can be very difficult to clean because of that roughness. All the dirt collects in the little uh, in the texture, and then uh, they're very hard to clean. So, quite a while ago, many decades ago, the first 
what they call impregnating or penetrating sealers were invented. And penetrating sealers work a different way. Just to demonstrate, this is the other category of sealers. So your coatings. This has been treated with a penetrating sealer. So this is just an ordinary piece of uh, concrete, um, or what you'd use for uh, grout, or just a normal grout, or piece of concrete. This is just you know cement and sand and water. It's very porous. Normally, we've made a little cup out of it. If you pour some water in there, it'll just pour through in two seconds flat. This has been treated with a penetrating sealer, though. What a penetrating sealer does is it goes into the pores of the material and it works by just repelling water or repelling water and oil. So it doesn't actually block up the core pores, it doesn't make a plastic coating on the outside, it doesn't fill up the pores, it just sits inside the pores and <clears throat> leaves the pores open and makes it repel water. So the water is not going through here. But just to demonstrate, air can still freely pass through if I blow into here. You can clearly see the air bubbles coming up through the water. So it hasn't blocked the pores at all. It hasn't changed the nature of the material. Now, this is many, uh, this is many pros. I mean, uh, as much as the um, coating will cover over the surface, this leaves the pores nice and, and open. Um, it leaves the material what people refer to as breathable. Now, breathable, it's a weird word to use because it doesn't you know, actually breathe, what it means is it leaves those holes, those little microscopic holes in the material totally open. Now why is that important? Let's say you've got a porous material like this piece of stone on your floor, and then you've got a concrete floor, and then you've got, you know, foundations going into the ground. Now you'll get water wicking up through that concrete structure, it'll get into the concrete structure somewhere, and it needs to be able to evaporate in order to escape. If most of your surfaces are covered with something that's completely waterproof, like a plastic coating of some sort, it's not going to be able to escape and that water is just going to circulate around your building structure and start to ruin things. Because this can breathe, it repels water, so water can't go through as a liquid, but it can evaporate and disappear as a gas. So over time, any water that's in here, even when it's treated on the top of the impregnator, will be able to evaporate and pass through as a gas and will slowly dissipate so that this dries out. So that's quite, quite important. The other thing is, it doesn't change the look of the material. You can see here, you know, here's a piece of granite that's uh, not been treated at all. You know, here's a piece of granite that's been treated. Uh, it doesn't change the look of it at all. There's nothing sitting on the surface. It doesn't change the color. It doesn't change the texture of it. it. doesn't make it shiny or less shiny. It just literally doesn't change the look of it. Um, in rare cases, you will get impregnator will make something maybe slightly slightly darker, but that's about the most it will do. And most of the time it won't. It'll just be unchanged like that. So that's a good plus. And the other thing, it doesn't change the slip resistance. So it doesn't change the nature. Now, impregnators will vary a little bit that way. Some are a little bigger and they'll sit more on the top and they can change the slipperiness when it's wet. And some of them work more from inside the pores and will have very negligible effect on slip resistance. So these are big pluses. And then the other thing is, probably the biggest thing is, if, if you have an impregnator that's not permanent, so it's not a dry treat impregnator, then as, you, uh, as, the, as the impregnator starts to wear off over time because of wear and washing with various chemicals and so on, you just put a little bit more on. There's nothing to strip. It's a very simple process. So impregnators are a little more expensive in the first place to put on, but they work out to be much less expensive and less of a nightmare long term because you just pop a little more. There's nothing, on, nothing to strip off. Thank you.